very good evening all. I'm Aditi Lama with the Tuesday night edition of South Asian News, Vision of Asia. We are coming to you from our studio in New York City. Welcome to the show. Let's begin the episode taking a look at the coronavirus pandemic and its impact. The world has surpassed 148 million cases of COVID-19 with now more than 3 million deaths. In India, home to many of our viewers, crisis is deepening as the second wave rages across India with more than 300,000 cases reported each day with more than 2,000 recorded COVID-19 deaths each day. Many reports are saying that these numbers could be a vast undercount in the world's second most populous nation. Countries across the globe, including the United States, have pledged medical supplies and assistance as overwhelmed hospitals face a great oxygen shortage in India. To all our family and friends back home, we hope you are staying safe and healthy. And our prayers for all those who have lost a loved one. It's a real tragedy and our entire team is with you. Here in the United States, we are at more than 32 million COVID-19 cases and at least 572,000 deaths. Today, new masking guidelines were issued by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, saying that fully vaccinated individuals can now unmask while walking, running, hiking or biking outdoors alone or with other vaccinated people. This comes as more than 290 million vaccine doses have been distributed in the country and more than 230 million have been administered. Also today, President Joe Biden urged all Americans to get vaccinated against the virus, saying that these new guidelines is a great incentive for Americans to roll up their sleeves. With that, it's now time to start tonight's South Asian news segment with much on culture today. Here are the headlines. Sun Nirankari Mission hosts Humanist Blood Drive 2021, Westbury, New York. Composer Amrita Vas on score and sound of Disney Junior's Mira Royal Detective, California. Gopi presents virtual panel discussion on alone but not lonely living the reality of new normal, New York City. Stand for a short break. Stay with the Vision of Asia, Voice of the Community. We'll be back shortly. <laughs> Welcome back, I am Didi Lama and this is Vision of Asia, Tuesday night episode of South Asian News. Let's begin by taking a look at the Sun Nirankari Missions New York, Connecticut chapter in Long Island. The mission is an all-encompassing and inclusive non-profit spiritual movement with an effort to unite mankind for the good of humanity. The Sun Nirankari Mission believes in responsible living in the society and that equality should prevail within community life. On that and on the belief of world peace and unity, recently the Sun Nirankari Mission hosted a Humanist Blood Drive 2021 at its Oneness Center in Westbury, Long Island. This blood drive was done in collaboration with the New York Blood Center in an effort to help the urgent need of blood which many blood centers are struggling with across the nation. Bringing together several of his volunteers and other community members, the Blood Drive saw more than 100 donors of all age groups at the event, some as young as age 16. Here are some highlights from the Humanist Blood Drive 2021. Hello everyone, you are watching ITV Gold and I'm your host Aditi Lamba. We are here today in Westbury, New York at the Stan Nirankari Mission's Humanist Blood Drive. This is in collaboration with the New York Blood Center. Currently, there is an urgent need of blood across the country and the Sun Nirankari Mission has come together to give back to its people and to help the lack of blood. So stay with us here as we take you across this whole process where you see a lot of South Asian Americans come together and give blood. One of the most important contributions one can make. Stay with us, I'll take you around this. Cherish every soul. Humanness is living. Sing oneness in all Rise above indifference From separate to whole Living a life of purpose Is a universal goal We can make a change Make a change Love is the way Is the way Let's break the walls Break the wall And make a better place So come together Come together Everyone, we're about to enter the Sun Nirankari Missions facility here and see exactly how the entire process is being done for the blood drive. So follow us. Thank you. Okay, and then we stop here, and then it's keep under right? Okay. Okay. So as you can see here. They're marked with social distancing here. People sit here to wait before donating blood. 
and they have made access here to ensure that everybody is spaced enough. Again, very important to follow the COVID-19 protocol here because we are in a pandemic. And there are some snacks here for all the people that are coming and donating blood just to make sure they're okay after they donate the blood. Okay, now we're gonna go downstairs where the blood is being donated and show you exactly how the entire process is being done. So just follow me. All right, everybody, behind us are some stations where people have to go and give some of their information in order to donate blood. These are all the volunteers of the Sandir and Mission who have just gathered here to help the process again and make it easy for people that are donating blood. Let's now take you to the room where the blood is being donated. Hello, everyone. You are joining us on ITV Gold, and I'm your host, Niti Lamba. Right now, joining us is Jerry Alfasi. He is from the Westbury and Carl Place Chamber of Commerce. Thank you so much for being with us on ITV Gold today. I would love to know why the Chamber of Commerce here is supporting SNM here, and how was your experience uh, with interacting with all the volunteers here? It was a wonderful experience. Uh, very humbling to walk into such a well-organized, beautiful facility, and. Um, watching people putting other people first and uh, especially with the youth. Uh, there's a lot of uh, younger uh, teenagers here uh, and that's very important, you know, in the community. Now joining us is another volunteer of the Sandirankari Mission was joined by Anish Vadva. Anish, thank you for being with us on ITV Gold. I'd like to know what is exactly happening at this bhavan today and, you know, donating blood is such an important part of the Sandirankari Mission. I'd like to know why. Hi, Aditi. So today we are having a blood donation drive over here. It has been a regular part of the mission since past almost 30 years that we have been donating blood. The importance of donating blood was first initiated by Sadhguru Baba Hardev Singh Ji Maharaj. So in 1980, that is when there was a problem that happened in the mission. And then Baba Ji actually wanted to give something back to the society. And he started blood donation drives by saying blood should flow in veins and not drains. So people all over the world are fighting with each other for everything. But Babaji told us that we need to donate blood so that everyone, every life is saved. And today with COVID, it has become even more important for everyone to get blood on time so that lives are saved. Uh, COVID-19, the pandemic has been so dreadful on so many communities. I'm sure the need of blood is even more. Um, how has that experience been for you? Is it difficult to get the blood that you were getting, the amount of blood you were getting before the pandemic? Um, yes, it's been uh, difficult as everywhere else with uh, COVID-19 and we lost a lot of blood drives throughout the whole you know, tri-state area, especially the high schools because they are closed, all the corporate corporations, churches and stuff. So in the first few months of the pandemic, we were very, very, very low on, on the blood supplies. But then it started to pick it up a little bit. And we're not in the full capacity of it. I mean, we're only like probably 60 to 70 percent capacity at this point because remember, we're not collecting from high schools, corporations, a lot of, you know, are closed. And but uh, we still we're picking it up, and it's so vital in the community. Um, also, and you know, it's, we're doing our best, as you know, and all the, all communities are helping us out, like your community also. And we're very appreciative to help you know, the community. Joining us right now is Mr. Arun Balia. He is the General Secretary of the entire Sandari Kari Mission in the North America region. Thank you for being with us on ITV Gold, Mr. Arun. I would love to know how has the turnout been this year with the blood drive? And we know that the mission keeps on doing blood drive on an annual basis. What's the purpose? Turnaround is very good this year, but I understand because due to pandemic, a lot of people need blood. And there are very few people who are doing blood donations. So I'm very glad that we have been able to contribute to the local community by uh, organizing this blood drive. Our mission every year has a blood drive because we call it Human Unity Day, where we say the mission says the blood should flow in the veins, not in the drains. So there is so much hatred in this world where people hate each other based on different things and they do bloodshed. So mission wants to do social contribution because our teaching of the mission is this, that all human beings are created by God and we all hear that God created man in his own image. So all the differences we should see are the physical outwardly, 
but internally everybody is same. So if we can give contribution to the society in which we live, then Kari Mission all over the world does blood donation drives. And right now we're joined by a key organizer of this blood drive at the Sunday Kari Mission. We're joined by Mr. Sanjeev Kavari. Thank you for being with us on ITV Gold. Uh, we love covering the mission. It's absolutely amazing. I would love to know exactly what is happening today here in Westbury, New York. And what was the purpose behind bringing this together? Well, thank you, uh, ITV Gold, for covering us. Uh, Sandankari mission, it's into, you know, uh, various social activities. Of course, it's a spiritual mission. But uh, the blood drive goes over, uh, uh, I would say, more than four decades now. And uh, the philosophy which Sadhguru Baba Hardev Singh Ji, you know, gave us was that blood should flow in veins, not in drains. Because the, there was a lot of terrorism and we saw, like, you know, how, how many people were killed. So he said the blood which is going in drains, that should flow in veins. And till today over a million units have been donated by Sandankari Mission all over the world. So we are one of the largest donors. And specifically in this pandemic, right, it's even more needed because uh, blood banks are running dry. So they approached us and we are connecting twice a year in New York chapter. Every chapter around the, around the world, they try to conduct at least one blood drive. So today, again, Westbury, we are approached by New York Blood Center to host a blood drive. And today, you see, all these volunteers are donating milk. And uh, people have, they are really encouraged to donate now. Let's now take a look at Gopio, the global organization of people of Indian origin. The organization, a nonprofit, is an international network of people of Indian origin and was founded at the first global convention of the global Indian community in 1989. Since then, the organization has been making many efforts to bring together our community through many in-person and virtual events representing Indian culture, heritage, arts, academics, and more. Recently, Gopio's Manhattan chapter in New York City presented a virtual panel discussion on the topic, Alone but not lonely, living in the reality of new normal. Just like the name suggests, this event discussed how COVID-19 pandemic has reshaped the face of humanity and the manner in which we are all functioning. It talked about techniques and methods in managing our new normal with the virus, especially with loneliness, a huge result of this pandemic impacting psychology of millions of people. Here are some highlights from Gopio's panel discussion. I bring greetings to you from Gopio International as its chairman and a warm welcome on behalf of Gopio Manhattan, which is organized this uh, webinar today. Uh, distinguished speakers, Dr. Arnab Ghosh, uh, Dr. Lippi Roy, Dr. Shubendu Sen, and uh, Dr. Taruna Chakravarti. We have a, a wonderful panel this evening. And ladies and gentlemen, it is almost more than one year we are all homebound because of the, this pandemic. Since vaccination has started in December in the United States has done an extremely good job in getting a large number of its population vaccinated. Gopio Manhattan has organized several webinars related to COVID and its effect. And this is the third of its series this year alone. And uh, today we, have, we are discussing about um, alone, but not lonely, living in the reality of new normal and it's a very timely topic. So good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Gopio series on talks on healthcare. Over the past months, we have had several talks on COVID-19, its vaccines, and focused on the scientific and medical knowledge that we have garnered to empower a community. However, in this conference, I want to focus on the human toll of COVID-19 and what we can do as a community to help each other. The pandemic undoubtedly has affected our health, our economy, but beyond this, the existence of an airborne disease amongst us, has, uh, which has been extending all across the globe, has led to restrictions on our ability to live our lives as social beings. And unsurprisingly, it has affected our society, our sanity, our psyche, and much more. So today we wanted to focus on these aspects by listening to people's stories. Participating with us today is an extraordinary panel of members from our community, and we are really proud to have uh, you all with us. Uh, I would like to start off with Dr. Roy. Dr. Roy is a medical communicator. She has uh, been a very effective communicator in several uh, 
mediums in TV, uh, TV in, in print media, and uh, also in social media. And she's a specialist herself in internal medicine and in addiction, and also is highly involved in uh, several community health schemes. I, I, it so was um, a tough year, for sure. And in fact, in the beginning of the year, I was actually collecting unemployment, believe it or not, because I was transitioning from full-time clinical medicine to part-time clinical medicine and uh, more uh, public speaking and media. And then, of course, the uh, pandemic hit, and that completely ended my... Um, at least the, the speaking industry was, I think, for the first hit, heavily hit. So, and then come March, uh, I was invited by MSNBC to be one of their medical contributors. And then I started getting interviews with, for various different clinical jobs and positions. And so things, things have a way of working out, but it was a, a, certainly a tough go uh, in the beginning. For me, at a personal level, I'll just give one example and then, you know, I'll pass it back to you. My hope came not from the scriptures, it did not come from famous uh, utterances from famous men and women. It actually came from my patients, a good number of them. One of my patients was a 94 year old, or I'll say a 94 year young patient. And uh, he was admitted with this situation, you know, and uh, fever and uh, hypoxia. And then he was diagnosed with COVID. So when I was getting in, inside the, his room fully protected. And I was about to say, uh, Mr. So-and-so, you've been diagnosed with this. I could not even start or finish. He turns around, he's barely whispering. And he's telling me, but before that doc, are you doing okay? You have a wife? Is your wife okay? You got children? Is your children okay? And I'm looking at him, I could just master a, a half-throated yes, and I'm looking at this impossible strength of humanity to turn around from the very throat of death. And I feel very comfortable to belong to a world where to be good for the sake of being good. You know, it does not need any overarching power or blessings. So for me, this is pandemic, this is a lot of emptiness, but this is also hope side by side. It's now time for another short break on Vision of Asia, Voice of the Community. Stay with us, we'll be right back. And welcome back, I am Aditi Lama and this is Vision of Asia, South Asian news segment. Let's now take a look at Disney Junior's animated series, Mira, Royal Detective on presenting South Asian American voices. Currently in season two, the series, Mira, Royal Detective follows the story of a young girl who travels throughout a magical Indian-inspired land of Jalpur solving mysteries for her friends, family, and the entire community of Jalpur. This new season features several South Asian festivals describing the essence behind each holiday and its meaning with a special episode on Muslim occasion Eid coming up this May 3rd. Discussing more on this upcoming episode, we spoke with the animated series accomplished South Asian composer Amrita Vas. Amrita is entirely responsible for the score and sound of Mira Royal Detective and is a passionate South Asian who loves to bring her Indian background into her music. She spoke with us wholeheartedly about her experience with Mira Royal Detective and the impact it has had on her. Here is our included conversation with Amrita Vaz. So let's go talking about Mira, the Royal Detective, an amazing show which is redefining South Asian Americans across the nation. What was the first thing that was described to you about the show when you were offered to score and give the sound for the entire show from the beginning and what attracted you the most to it? Um, you know, I was never, uh, you know, the, the kind of girl who was interested in princesses. So at first I was a little nervous, wondering if I'd have, you know, to be able to tell the story. And then I discovered Mira's not a princess. You know, Mira is um, a go-getter, she's a, a, a commoner, um, and she, she's a, a thinker. And I loved all the characteristics about her. She's very kind, she's very compassionate. You know, I have a daughter of my own now, she's five. And when I was starting this show, I thought, um, you know, wouldn't it be wonderful if I could work on a project that helped her get to know her South Asian heritage? and also spoke her language of you know, children's programming. Um, so that was definitely something that was very appealing to me. Um, and, and the more that I got into it, the thing that really, really hit home, or the, really, the thing that really convinced me to do this project is how committed Disney Junior was to authenticity. 
you know, there's been many programs and shows that have brought in South Asian stories. But the thing that was really critical and important to me is that we are we see ourselves as authentic. That that there's a respect, there's a, um, a uh, an amount of research that goes in to displaying ourselves, to to depicting ourselves in a respectful but also authentic way. Let's hear it for Mira, royal detective Mira, Mira. I love the fact that every episode's gonna have a song and dance element. Some of the songs that I've heard already are super catchy, and you can't help but like sitting your chair and just kind of, you know, tap your feet. They've been sending signs, now we're on their tail. Let's go, we're on the trail. One of the things I love about writing music on Mirror Royal Detective is the commitment amongst so many of the creatives on the show to authenticity. Yes, definitely. You know, when we look at Mira, when we watch Mira, uh, when we're looking at the score and sound especially, there are so many instruments. And it does sound very South Asian. You can relate to it. You can relate to what she's doing um, in the animated series. What has been the most difficult aspect of making the score and sound for Mira? Oh, well, you know, finding the sound for Mira was a challenge because, um, you know, she's, while she's you know, living in a world of Jalpur, which is a very specific era, we, we did also want to, to appeal to young ears and, and also make the palette reflective of Disney's uh, sort of um, Disney's uh, Western classical sound. So it was about how do you find that balance between an Indian sensibility and also this Western classical sound. So one of the challenges was in recording because we have, um, you know, you have these very tight deadlines. You know, I, I didn't know before I started working on, on Mira how insanely tight these timelines are. And, you know, you have just a few days between spotting to start to record music. And so to hire musicians to, to play in a traditional sense isn't isn't always so easy. So trying to make sure that I, I bring in as many live instruments as possible within our timeline um, was was certainly a big challenge. And how to do that in a way that blended these Western and Indian worlds um, was another big challenge. One of the things I love about working on Mirror Royal Detective is the commitment amongst so many of the creatives on the show to authenticity. When we record Sathar, you know, we have uh, videos and oftentimes they will make sure that they're matching the fingers which is more than you would see in live action never mind animated shows. Do you have a lot of South Asians that work with you when you are creating this music and how is it working with the entire team? There are a lot of amazing people, Emmy Award winners working on Mira's music. Yes, so let's talk about Matt Tischler and Jeannie Lurie, they write the music for the songs. The songs are so good. I love them so much. They're such ear catching and, and they're really well thought out and very well researched. And they bring in a lot of live musicians for the palette as well. Um, and um, so I don't work directly with the songwriters. They, uh, you know, they work on the song separately, but they are just incredible. And they, again, spend so much time really crafting these wonderful, uh, fun stories uh, that they sing. And and as you also, I'm sure, might, might mention too, is Nakul, who's the choreographer. Yes. So, so, you know, the, all of us together working on these, like, uh, you know, telling the story with dance, and songs with lyrics and then the score. It's just, it's just such an incredible team to be part of. Well, this wraps up our show for the night. Please send us your suggestions and get your voices and organizations on our show. Email us on events at itvgold.com or follow us on Facebook at itvgold. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel for free access to many of our popular shows. Thank you for joining us tonight from Queens, New York. This is Vision of Asia and I am Aditi Lamba. Take care and be well.